everybody, this is Christian Buckley doing another MVP Buzz Chat. I'm talking today with Denny. Hello. Hey, Christian. Great. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. So for folks that don't know you, who are you, where are you, and what do you do? Uh, so I am Denny Cherry. Uh, I am based out of San Diego, California. Um, I started as a database administrator back in the day, so I'm the enemy of basically everybody in IT. Um, and I've gone on from there and I obviously do a bunch of database stuff still, uh, but I've also been doing a ton of migrations up to the cloud, either AWS, GCP, or, or Azure, mostly Azure to be perfectly honest. Um, I'm a Microsoft MVP, both in data platform and in uh, Microsoft Azure. Uh, so I've got a wide variety of knowledge and I spend an awful lot of time talking to people about this stuff. That's very cool. Um, I run, well, oh, yeah. Go ahead. Go I, ahead. Say, uh, I run a small consulting company. Um, there are uh, nine of us total, seven consultants, five MVPs, um, and that's Denny Cherry. Well, what are those other two doing? Are they just slacking off or what? Uh, well, one of them is new. <laughs> he's been in IT for about a year and a half. Okay. Um, so he's got a valid reason. All right. Um, the other guy, yeah, he's been too busy working, so he hasn't been able to focus on the community stuff. Yeah. Um, and the pandemic didn't help. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. It, it it certainly changed things around for a lot of people. Like I I was doing that. Monica and I were talking about that interview. So one of one of his uh, team members as well. Um, we're, we're talking about this uh, international events as events are starting to come back online and more popping up. Um, I, I was traveling. I was doing, you know, one or two events a month for years. It was like that. And just to go to nothing and just uh, you just had to kind of change it up. I was writing more, creating more videos, just doing more virtual stuff like everybody. But, and, uh, uh, it, yeah. it, it went immediately from a lot of stuff to, oh, what are we all going to do? Because we're all just kind of stuck at home at this point. Um, and I'm I'm worried about this new variant that's come out well, a couple weeks ago that, that's running around the UK right now. Like that may cause a lot of headaches as well. And, you know, yeah, down, yeah, so we're, I've not. got inter international travel scheduled this fall. So, yeah, I'm thinking about that as well. But yeah, same. I'm, I'm, I've got a trip to Italy scheduled for November. So I'm, I'm worried about that as well. Yeah. Well, it, it, hopefully the, 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 the inconvenience will, won't be more than having to wear a mask on the flight over that it doesn't shut things down again. But yeah. Well, so, so I know it's been, you've been an MVP for what, 15, 16 years now. Something uh, like that, yeah. Long, long time. What was, so I always like to ask, like, what was your journey to becoming an MVP? I know it, it was, how different was it 15 years ago trying to become an MVP from what you see in the community now? Uh, well, I mean, there are a lot less in-person events to start with. Um, so I, I became an MVP through a lot of, presenting at conferences mm -hmm. um so but there were a lot less conferences back in the day um so i'm from the sql server world or at least that's where i started from so pre-pandemic we'd have things like sql saturdays which would literally be every single weekend oh yeah um even the weekend like between christmas and new year's would typically have one we would just be in another part of the world that isn't shideo christian right um so, like, doing conferences was relatively easy three or four years ago. Um, 15 years ago, that was not the case. So I did my local code camps. Um, I, I'm in Southern California. So basically, we have three of three code camps a year at the time. Uh, one at San Diego, one in Orange County, and one in Los Angeles. So basically, the bang with bang down yep. the coast. Um, and so those would be every three or four months. So that gave me a decent introduction to speaking and, and seeing folks in the community and stuff like that. Um, and then after that, it was just basically, you went straight from there trying to study the big national and international conferences. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the stepping stones of, all right, do I actually want to get in front of an audience and, and getting in front of the audience of 20 local people um, didn't really happen. It was regional events, national events, and that was it. 
Um, and then I was doing some stuff online in some of the forums. Uh, but even there, there were a lot less. I mean, 15 years ago, there was no Stack Overflow, yep. which is where 95% of IT people can be found. Um, so you have to find the forums that you wanted to talk on and 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 talk on them and, and get well known, relatively well known on them, um, to even get the attention of somebody at the MVP program to to add you. Well, that's that. Uh, what I always tell you, you get those questions a lot. I'm sure you hear from people too, kind of, you know, what what's that path and. Uh, you know, like I, I'm mentoring people that are asking that question. And one of the, I said, look, there's no set path that can be different. There's different mm -hmm. people that are comfortable with difficult things, but one of the easiest, lowest barriers of entry is going to, as you said, stack overflow um, out on the uh, Microsoft tech community um, yep. places where people are asking questions and share your answers or uh, you know, uh, or, or even just, uh, even if all you're doing is commenting on and adding to where people have already answered questions and uh, uh, seconding, you know, a, a saying, I, hey, I've tried the same thing. Yes, this is what worked for me. Um, but, uh, or, or connecting people like, hey, this person over here might be able to answer. Doing something like that, there, there are plenty of people that started their MVP, you know, paths by yeah. doing that. Oh, yeah, most, most definitely. Um, I think one of the things I, I know that that has frustrated a lot of people that are trying to become an MVP is the, a lot of times they'll ask, well, what do I need to do to be an MVP? And the problem there is, well, there is no set list. Like it's it's a bell curve. So, you know, you're, you're effectively going against A, the people that are currently MVPs, as well as all the other people that are not currently MVPs. And where do you fit on the bell curve of, yeah. and you know, the people at the top of the bell curve, those are the ones that get the award. Um, so it, it, it can get frustrating. I'm sure right now. I, I know it can, cause I've got, you know, I've played the game back, back before I was an MVP. Um, and yeah, I mean, it can certainly be frustrating to have to deal with this, to try to figure out what to do if, if you want to really want to become an MVP. Yeah. That's, I, I was, I just, simply describe it as a black box yeah yeah it really and, is and, and and depending on the area the focus area the technology area because microsoft even i won't say lower the bar but there are certainly areas where they say you know we need we need to have more community people we need to have more mvps and so we're going to expand the net and and yeah. so that we can build up in certain areas um and then of course you know, as, as you said, it's it's the part of the competition is people who are MVPs. We're looking every year at the renewal process and Microsoft has, they've been talking about it for a couple of years, but it seems like they're finally starting to tighten the belt a little bit around that to make sure that the MVPs that are in there, that it's not just a rubber stamp for a yeah. renewal, that they're actually contributing, continuing to contribute. Too, yeah, I, I think that's something that a lot of people think happens is that MVPs are just rubber stamped to be back at the program again next year. And like, that's not the case. Like I, a couple of years ago, there were a couple of SQL Server MVPs that listed nothing in their MVP profile. And I assume they were expecting to just get renewed. And they got a very different email on, you know, July 1st saying, you are no longer an MVP. Um, you didn't tell us anything right um so as far as we know you did nothing so yeah. bye yeah it's well that that's why it, it's it was well, again I, when i talk to people that are interested in the path i say well it, it's it's not so much about trying to become an mvp but um if you're already contributing to the community if you're already doing things things that you would do regardless of the award or not are you surfacing that? Is it visible to the right people? Are the right people seeing it? That can right. sometimes be the hardest part. Yeah, you're doing a little, because I, we've all known there, there's MVPs or I fought for who were just very, they were quietly in the background doing tons of stuff, but just not bringing attention to themselves. They're yeah. supporting the community, supporting events, supporting other speakers and events. Um, you know, and so it, it's, it, it, it's kind of how much what do you do to ring your own bell 
you know, not look like a complete ass out there, self promoter. Like I jokingly, I have on my blog when I promote stuff that I'm doing, I have a tag called blatant self promotion. Mm -hmm. So, you know, where I'm just like, look, I just I want to get the word out that I'm doing this, but it's like, look, I, I realize that it, it 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 it's not a great look to be like, yo, hey, hey, take a look. Yeah, you, you've got to find that happy balance between self crazy crazy self promotion and looking like a jerk because of it, and you know, not doing anything and not saying anything. You you've got to find that that balance to to that because if nobody knows you're doing stuff. I mean that's fine, but you can't. You're not going to get rewarded for it, which is the MVP award is an award. Yeah. So it's Microsoft's way of saying thank you for doing this stuff. So, so how do you overcome that? Like, what do you do? How do you, how do you do that that self promotion? Um, I have a very large mouth, um, and <laughs> because of that, lots of people at Microsoft know me, whether they like to or not. Um, and that helps a lot. Um, so I, because of that, I, I've been able to, you know, I get the ear of people and you know, internally, I, as an MVP, there's lots of distribution lists that we can be on with various members of the product group um, or of various product groups. So I'm on a dozen of those. So I talk to those people on a fairly regular basis. Um, I talk to my MVP lead on a fairly regular basis. You know, I also speak at large conferences. Mm -hmm. um, so that helps just people to know me and know who I am and know what I do. So. Yeah. Well, that's, I mean, that is, that is the thing. If you, if you have, if you build up a following to a blog, uh, to, to your YouTube channel, to TikTok channel, whatever it is where you're creating content, mm -hmm. um, you're going to naturally get some of that, that visibility. Yeah. Any recommendations for somebody that doesn't have the visibility? Like how do you I'm start the, that? I'm the worst person to ask that just because <laughs> I've been in be so long that I've forgotten how to do a lot of that stuff. Um, just because I I'm friends with 80 people on the product team. So yeah. like when I have questions, I can just ask them. And that gives that that makes me visible to the people in the MVP program because but, of that. But that's a great example of that. Uh, of uh, I think it's a great recommendation is to say that uh, no matter where you are in the world, you know, who, who are your closest Microsoft personnel? Find out yeah. who they are. Like I got where, where I am, it's actually just a sales office here. And mm -hmm. so there's a, there's a bunch of people, I think there's 80 or a hundred Microsoft employees that live in the area, but it's all sales. It's, you know, people that uh, they don't, they don't do anything in Utah or not a whole lot. They don't, they don't go into the office every day kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but still knowing who they are and invite them to stuff or uh, you know, offer to help with different things, but you'll get to know them. That's a place to start. Yeah, definitely. And, and if you're not in the U S a lot of people outside the U S get discouraged because Microsoft is a U.S. company. So they assume they need to know people in the U S at corporate to become an MVP or to, to work with the community programs. And that's not necessarily the case. So for everybody outside the US, every country has a Microsoft office they, and they've got a local Microsoft subsidiary. Um, and they're the ones that nominate and, and manage the MVPs in that local country. Mm -hmm. um, so you don't necessarily have to worry about the folks in Redmond if you're not in the US. Yeah. You are, then Redmond is you know, the, the, a lot of the folks that you're going to deal with are, are going to be here or going to be up there. Um, but yeah, if you're outside of the U.S., knowing your local people in, at your local subset, that's going to be the key to to get a good, that insight and that access to Microsoft. Another great way to, to find out is, is if there is a, an event where there are Microsoft speakers that are in the topic, the area that you focus on. So they may not be from your country, but if they're in that region, they may be the spokesperson for Power Platform, for example, and doing a lot of different events. And, and usually the Microsoft people that are actively speaking at these different events and conferences, they're a bit more social and connected. And so they're going to be more apt to connect with you and, and uh, somebody that you could develop a relationship as well. Yeah, definitely. Well, very cool. So, so what kind of topics? Like, what are you writing about, talking about right now? What are the, what are your hot topics? Um, hot topics recently: uh, Southwest Airlines and their technical debt screw up, <laughs> um, where they they 
basically shut themselves down for a couple of days because they could get pilots on airplanes. Um, I wrote about that for Inc. Magazine. Um, I wrote for, I wrote to write for Techie Guru recently. Um, I know I wrote a couple of things on conditional access and Azure Active Directory back before it was renamed like a month ago. Um, so I need to write new articles with the new names. Um, yeah. So I'm like, cool, great. Everything's been rebranded. Awesome. I can sell all new articles with basically the same content. Awesome. <laughs> Just fixing all the names. Um, so those are kind of the big things I've written recently. Um, yeah, I'm looking at your, late, your most recent Techie Gurus stuff. Top five reasons companies should move workloads to the cloud. Yeah, It's always a, a, a popular, more of a business topic. Um, yes, I, I, I ask, yeah, so uh, uh, pass or SaaS, which platform is the correct yeah. solution for a workload? Yeah, I've been writing a lot on Azure specifically um, recently, just because a lot of our customers are, are either in Azure or moving towards Azure. Um, and so they have lots of questions. So when the when they bring up questions, I'll typically write an article about it for somebody and, and post it out there. Um, I've taken the last few weeks off as I had shoulder surgery a few weeks ago. Oh, fun. I yeah. just, just got the sling off like two days ago. Yeah. But so once the, once that's done recovering, I'll probably go back to writing writing a couple articles and, and sending some stuff back out. Um, but yeah, that's, that's pretty much just been the stuff that people want is what I try to write about. My, my writing process is always, I never know what to write about. If you hmm. if somebody gives me a topic, happy to write an article on it. It's the coming up with topics that I am awful at. Well, that's something too, and and this is kind of a worded advice for anybody. If if you're if you've written for other sources or if you're interested in, if you go to talk to CMSY or Techie Gurus or I'm sure your editor at Inc. and say mm -hmm. it's like you know they've got their one, they're, they're kind of their editorial focus, uh, usually yeah. monthly or quarterly basis, but they usually are pretty good at tracking, like, what are the keywords? Like, what are people searching for over content that we don't have, that they're not mm -hmm. finding and give you suggestions? So people just need to ask. So that's something, of course, there are tools that are out there that you can go and do that kind of research on your own as well. Yeah. I mean, you can go do Google keyword analysis and find suggestions. Yeah. What I always like, what I love doing is, it's funny, Bing doesn't do it. Google does a, a be much better job of it, but is, so you, you enter in, you know, search for whatever topic you're interested in writing about, and you see like other questions that people are asking about that topic. If you, you find the most relevant ones, open and close them. And what it does is it adds to that list of other questions people are asking, you can then go search on those questions for content. Yeah. So here, this is the editor in me that is, uh, you know, has these suggestions because I do get that question a lot. Like, well, what are you looking for in that? It's just, you know, like, uh, like there's constantly new projects that are out there. You can just go do and do any Bing Google search on tech news and see all like the announcements from the last month from a variety of different companies, things and, and get ideas for yeah. articles on that. Um, but yeah, yeah the other, one other thing I did, I just to add it again, my final, then I'll, I'll step off the, the editor soapbox, but is love it when there's cross product integration stuff, where when you talk about a, the, like the business application of something, it's one thing to go in there and say, let me describe what, you know, this, Azure, what what is Azure, and and yeah. write about that kind of thing. It's like no, it, but if you talk, go in and talk about like here, I'm you know, migrating a customer from Amazon to Azure in this in this specific example, and then walk through that. People love that real world experience. Yeah, look at you know maybe a mix of different technologies. Yeah, and. Not necessarily the, the the nuts and bolts and details of the article because those are going to apply to seven people. Right. Um, what I think a lot of people like to read, or at least what I like to read, um, is something more mid level, not not super high level, um, not super in depth, but that mid level. Of, this is all the stuff we had to pick up and move from point A to point B, and this is the rough idea of how we got from point A to point B. 
and then throw some business stuff in there about how much money we saved, and that keeps the, that keeps the CFO happy. Right. Um, no, that's a, that's that's why the majority of content, uh, the most popular content, is is I, I'd say kind of like 60, 40, 200 level, three hundred level. So you get like solution architects, so somebody that's knowledgeable about the topic, but then has a business focus gets into the technology and then you get into more of 300 level which is like the administrative and it's scripting and how you know how, here's how you fine tune this thing to 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 get there so it's not just go and deploy it out of the box but here's the things that you take into consideration as you're doing a deployment that more on the admin side of that yeah you know, people just love that kind of content the yeah. Yeah, the 400 level where you go in down to the code and you're going to build something like right there, like, hey, that's great for engineers and, you know, that that side of things, but you're going to lose the vast majority of the audience there. Yeah, no, yeah, so I, I, I've I presented at conferences where they, they tell the speakers when they're submitting, we only want 400 to 500 level content. No, you don't. <laughs> you want to say that you have you want that, but what you want is 200 to 300 level content because that's what will sell. Yeah. And if you're running a conference, your job is to sell seats, um, to you know sell sell tickets. Um, so you know it's great to say all our content is 400, and I'm happy to do a 500 level topic on indexes. It will be useful to absolutely nobody. Yeah, because well, it's the, not real world stuff. But that, <laughs> but that's the, that's the stuff where after you're done with your 300 level topic, where you're going through the architectural level uh, you know, of that and you know, some detail there. And then people come up and ask those questions. You get the three people that come up at the end and ask for those granular engineering discussion, right. you know, questions. Yeah. And that's, that's when as the marketing guy, and that's what I say, let me introduce you to this Steve from my uh, engineering team. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, cool stuff. Well, so anything else going on community wise, uh, you know, anything that you're involved in uh, coming up here soon? Uh, so I know the past summit, Live 360 and Ignite are all happening in November, conveniently the exact same week. Where's um, PASS happening? In the same week as Ignite. It did yeah, no, where Convention. where is it happening? Oh, Seattle Convention Center. Same oh. building oh. as Ignite. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's convenient. Right. So uh, one of them is on one side of Pike Street. The other one's on the other side. Okay. Um, I don't know which is on which side. Um, but yeah, that's that's how they're splitting it up this year. Um, but yeah, so they're they're both in the same place. Um, I will not be at any of those conferences for the first time in 12 or 13 years now. Um, I will be on a cruise ship from Italy to to Florida. Um, we we booked a cruise two years ago, and it happens to be the exact same time as past. So, uh, of course, of course. Like, and there will be other I'll, some major life event happening when MVP Summit when they finally announce the dates on that. Yeah, it's just yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think I don't remember when that is, but I think yeah, they've not announced it yet. Oh, they have they not announced. No, yet? so all my international MVP friends are fuming. There's like, you know, I'm like I'm booking travel already for events. Like I'm yeah. already submitting abstracts for conferences, and we don't know when these events are going to be. Like Microsoft needs to get back on the ball and yeah, announce they, this stuff early. They are really, really bad about announcing dates especially things like mvp summit yeah that aren't customer based and that you don't have to buy tickets to and that sort of thing well they're waiting too long and ignite build and inspire as well we don't find out details until like 30 40 days in advance it's just crazy so inspire for the last five or six years has been easy to figure out look at when to see comic con in san diego is it's the same week oh okay <laughs> Right. <laughs> it was extremely inconvenient for me as I go to Comic Con. Yeah. Um, so I, I've gone to one Inspire event. I think that was the first one, or first or second one after it was rebranded. Um, yeah. But after that, it's been the same week as Comic Con. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to that instead of Inspire. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's like, so Ignite with that overlap. Like I'll be at, uh, I'll be at Live 360 in Orlando. Mm -hmm. So that's just the, the an yet another event happening that same week. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, three of them the same week. Like I, I've, I've thought about how to do pass and live through sixty because they've been the same week for a couple of years now. Yeah. Um, but unfortunately, the Seattle to Orlando trek is really hard. Yeah, um, during I've the heard summer, that. there's some nonstop flights, but you know, November, not summer, 
Um, so there are no non-stops. So basically, it's a red eye. Or it's not a red eye. It's, an, it's a layover. Um, probably with a red eye, which is really hard to do. Um, and yeah, yeah the, it just basically sucks. <laughs> Yeah, no, I hey, I know. I I so I'm in Salt Lake. So I mean go going east that time to get to Florida, it's hard to do. Yeah. So I'm gonna be going through probably Dallas or Houston or Atlanta yep. to get down there. So yeah, can't can't avoid it. I was there for the hurricane last November in Florida. So mm -hmm. yeah, uh, it's uh I'm I'm hoping to repeat that experience. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, well, hopefully any hurricane you hit there will be as mild as the one that came through San Diego. Yeah, there you go. I'm far enough on the coast that the entire hurricane went east of me. Um, I know it caused a lot of problems yeah. out, the, out the inland empire, um, but my house, we, we got like some rain and a slight bit of wind. I don't even think any of my chairs outside moved. Yeah. So, I think, hey, we saw some rain out of that system as well. So it, it was big enough that it reached yeah. this far east of California as well. So, yeah. So I know my, my sales guy's up in Marietta, California, up in the Inland Empire. And he said he got drenched. They were closing roads. Oh, yeah. Roads were flooding out. I'm like, yeah, dude, I, we, we got, we got like some rain. Everybody always laughs about that Los Angeles river, which is that little stream that's down mm -hmm. in there. And it's like, well, that's, there's a reason why they built that system the way they did. It was yep. for that, that, that you know, El Nino storm system like this. It's, yeah, it there, serves its reason, purpose. Yeah. There's a reason it's like 20 feet wide and like 15 feet deep. Yep. And yeah, it, it usually has nothing in it, but yeah. you know, people and, and cars for movies. Yep. Um, but when it, when they need to put water in it, it can hold a lot of water and it can move a lot of water. And it's, yep. yeah, it's there for a reason. I mean, it's, it keeps LA County from flooding. Yep. Well, Hey, Denny. So uh, close things out. If people want to reach out, connect with you, what are the best places to find you? Where are you most active in social? Uh, so the easiest way to find me is our website, uh, www.dcac.com. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, uh, Blue Sky, Mastodon, uh, at Mr. Denny. Um, companies got Twitter. On Twitter, we're DCAC CO. Uh, Mastodon, Blue Sky, you can find us at DCAC. Um, and so we, we're trying to stay active pretty much everywhere. There's just a lot of social media to look at right now. Yeah, there are. Yep. Well, thank you so much for your time. And we'll make sure we'll have the links, of course, for everything out on the blog. It'll be out on uh, YouTube and out on the podcast as well. So you can find all the links there. Uh, and and it's uh, great to, maybe I'll see you at one of these events, maybe the, the latter half this year. I don't know. I'm going to be going to like six or seven more this year. So maybe we'll cross paths. So hopefully we will. If not, that's always what mixture is for. Yep. <laughs> hey, we'll talk to you soon. All right.